Hey everybody, back with another Evercade cartridge review. This time it is Sunsoft Collection 1. And as always, comes with a nice full color manual, a little bit of history about Sunsoft. Every game gets a couple pages at least, even some maps. I dig the full color manuals, but what about the games? Let's go ahead and take Sunsoft Collection 1. Let's pop it in my Evercade VS and see how these games hold up today. Let's go to the games. Sunsoft Collection 1 is cartridge 31 of the standard Redbox series. Amazon gives it a release date of October 6, 2023 here in the United States and had it in stock at the standard $19.99 price point at the time of my research. The cartridge contains six games. I will list them for my least favorite, working my way up to my most favorite. Let's start with Arabian for the Famicom from 1983. This is based on the arcade game of the same name and comes from the early days of the company when they were known as Sun Electronics. This game contains a series of single screen platform levels for one or two players alternating. In the game, you can kick enemies as well as jump. You collect letters to clear levels and collecting letters in order to spell a word earns you bonus points. It's okay for an early 80s game, but I just can't get past the third screen and the fun really isn't there for me. Arrow the Acrobat for the Super Nintendo is next. This is a platformer for one player only. This came out at a time when every company seemed to be trying to make their own Sonic-like mascot character. Arrow is nowhere near the level of a Sonic the Hedgehog game, but it does offer some okay platforming action. Next, we have Mr. Gimmick. This is another platformer for one player only. Coming out at the end of the NES's life, Mr. Gimmick really shows some of the best graphics for the NES. The game itself feels a bit like Mega Man, but way harder. They actually hacked the game, giving you more lives, which you'll probably need. And thankfully, there are save states to use as well. The difficulty comes from some tricky platforming and the fact that your star projectile has to be made before you can fire it and it bounces kind of weird, but if you time it right, you can actually ride it. This game was never released in the States, so it's a nice addition to get something unique. It's tough, but I like it. Next, I have Blaster Master Boy for the Game Boy. This is an overhead action game for one player only. In Japan, this was actually based on the Bomberman series, but the sprites and name was changed for the US release. It also explains why this game does not have platformer levels like the original Blaster Master. It plays like Bomberman meets Zelda, and while it does move a bit on the slow side, I still enjoyed this addition. Next, we have Journey to Silius for the NES. This is yet another platformer for one player only. This was originally designed to be based on the Terminator, and you could definitely feel the Terminator influence when playing it. But a loss of the license changed the direct tie-in. It's also a tough game, and you can only fire straight, but you can collect other weapons with limited ammo. I'm looking forward to getting into this one some more. Finally, Blaster Master for the NES. This is a combination platformer slash overhead action game for one player only. You spend most of your time platforming in your vehicle while the overhead action sequences are out of it. It also has several power-ups and boss fights. 
The game also features some great music and solid graphics. It's a true classic for the NES and it still holds up very well today. Family friendly wise, the game received a Peggy rating of 7 and would most likely get an E for Everyone rating here in the United States, with no major objectionable content I noticed while playing. So what do I think of Sunsoft Collection 1? This is the best Redbox Collection game I've played in a while, and one of the better collections overall. Even with only 6 games, there's only one true dud in my opinion in Arabian, and even that was a game we didn't get here in the States so it's still something unique for us. You also get other good additions, like the previous foreign exclusive Mr. Gimmick, two games that sometimes fly under the radar in Silius and Blaster Master Boy, and of course the true classic in Blaster Master. So in the end, I think this is a great mix, and one of the better Evercade cartridges out there. So where am I going to rank Sunsoft Collection 1? It's going to battle Namco Museum 1 for the 3 position on my list. And even though it's very close, and I mean very close, my enjoyment of Blaster Master coupled with some other nice additions to this collection is going to give Sunsoft the edge. So of the 24 cartridges I've now ranked for the Evercade, Sunsoft Collection 1 is debuting at the 3 position. Sunsoft Collection 1 is one of the better recent additions to the Evercade library. Now if only we could get a Sunsoft Collection with some of their licensed properties like Batman and Fester's Quest, at least one can dream. But that's just what I think, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy videos such as this one and want to support my work, please click like and subscribe, drop a comment below, and for mega supporters, either become a channel member or sign up at patreon.com slash noswearegamer. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day and look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Noswear Gamer. Take care, everybody.